What's going on, guys? Dane here, and I got two ridiculous matches that I need you to witness back-to-back. -back. No, it's not the three crushing wins, dog. Crushing wins, they ain't all that fun to watch. We have two back-to-back -back ridiculous situations. Now, this man right here is going to be the rusher of the eight cost. You know what I'm saying? You can already tell by how he's going to be playing. The next one is the story of going against way too many ultra rares that I've never... I, I, I did not know what one of them did. That's what I'll say about that. Now, we have in the uh, opposing corner, in the red corner, we have an opening with one key, saving eight keys for a value play on the second turn. You're just pretending you're going second, you're grabbing some land while you can, and you're getting a big unit or a swarm of units out, regardless in an eight-piece barbecue dragon comes out, and he looks like he might be looking to play a little ball, you know what I'm saying? Ask LeBron, he knows nowadays, dog. I don't, I, I've never actually seen the new Space Jam. In the blue corner, we actually have a corn cob instantly up into a position to completely defend the mid piece. It's beautiful, we can get these double taps on. There is room to maneuver to the stim pad with the corn cob on the very next turn after placing a trap already where it needs to go. Henrietta comes in to fill in the mid and Boomer goes in back to give options. Do you go for the Boomer now to allow yourself to have some sort of pressure on the heart and slow the bleeding or do you go for the Henrietta mid take and it looks like he's going to the mid take before he even worries about taking his own side. Now I call this a mistake but it ain't my place to take the mid piece right now. We have it defended. We have Snowball in the uh, bottom lane right now completely roasting and toasting is one key he has lowered his key advantage and has no map control whatsoever after rushing an eight key what are you doing my man we're gonna move boomer into safety where he can no longer be double tapped we are on the stim pad we have full board control and we are coming out with return fire when you have full board control you have key advantage you start making sure people have to hurt themselves to get in to see ya. You know what I'm saying? Wouldn't want to be a subpar char. Now, with the wall breaker up top, he's going to completely waste all of his cooldowns. Actually, I take that back. He has used it already. He's going to wait for his cooldowns to come back up, and he's going to camp behind tower in top lane as the bottom lane comes up with a poison assault out of the assassin, and we do have a flying bat ready to come up over the wall and take on corn cob how do we handle such thing well our cooldowns are actually up having summoned our wall break first and we're gonna go ahead and use it and we are gonna use this corn cob to <laughs> double tap a bat you know what i'm talking about we're gonna mm, punish a bat for thinking he could come anywhere near us we're gonna burn this man if he goes for the double tap he's fired if he goes for the move he better back it up because he's not going to kill the corn cob with one hit right now the poison does not go off on the end of his turn it goes off on the end of mine and we're safe right now. Now we choose the Quagmire over spending three keys to heal a two key. We are not turning Corn Cob into a five key. We already got the trap usage. We already made him spend two keys to break the trap. We already broke that two key. We already broke his bat. We already broke a robot. The Corn Cob has done his job, applied pressure, and actually made him take way too much risk, even getting in to kill it in the first place. We got so much value out of that Corn Cob, it is okay that he has gone early. He did more than you could expect him to do over the course of a game. Just like that. Now we're going to move forward with a little bit of the Tazy Taze and get the one shot, one kill all day. We're going to move a three key on down to bottom lane and take the opposing tower. And we're going to move Cassowary in position to back up the damage on the very next turn as we back up and allow him to come in to our full board presence pressure. Does he take our side? Does he go for our side or does he finally stop the bleeding on his own towers? Looks like we're going to find out now. He moves forward and he's going to go ahead and try to get a big smack off on the lantern. Big deal, big deal. Take the return damage. That is why he is here. He's going to be doing more damage to their team on our turn than any of these fires have done at all. There's a 300. There's already been 400. You're looking at a, almost 500. You're looking at, oh my god, the damage is flying. And we're looking pretty. Now the barbecue has shown up and has taken over our stim pad but our eight key target has arrived. We're going to go ahead and burn the man and no one's using this stim pad anymore. We are actually putting our lantern in full danger to get the whole damage potential off. But the lantern's a six key. This is an eight key barbecue. A big deal on his team considering it was a rush. He must value it highly. Let's take his value off the board. His eight key is gone. If we lose six key for it, guess what? The trades have been insane regardless and we are okay with it. 
we move forward with the dog to make sure he can't easily take the stim pad. Now, this may look like an absolute sacrifice. What it is is a bait. We are expecting him to kill this thing for movement to kill the cassowary, but the cassowary's damage aided in killing an eight key. That is three keys, two keys, and six keys down on our turn after an eight key trade after one keys after two keys he has been hemorrhaging hp and keys this entire game as another bunny rabbit comes out we might have a fan of the channel people easy peasy now a skitter is going to go ahead and cat scratch his way down to body block the jar that is a beautiful play because i was in fact planning on smacking him with the undead unit using the sacrifice and taking out his jar however he gave me a better play so I appreciate not allowing me to make a mistake in this situation. We're going to move forward with the robot. We're going to put him right in position. He is not able to move twice and attack. He is as far as he's going to go this time around. We are going to apply pressure. We're going to apply damage. We're going to bust the wall open. And we are going to let it sit just like that, having absolute free reign to hit whoever he decides to bring in. He is greeting his way into a kill. He sees a kill opportunity and the greed has set in. He is tunnel visioned on getting the kills here, but the tunnel vision may be his downfall as we lose six keys for the trade. Big deal at this point. A two key robot flies right in front. Of a drone. Oh, what? A two, a two, a two, I, I'm so flabbergasted by the horrendous positioning out of this drone. I can't even fathom what the man was thinking with the play. As we go for the taps and the taps and the damage and the double tap out of Quagmire does not secure the kill. However, the positioning out of Bison is going to force him through so much incredible HP. And the Muffin Top is going to make him question the HP as well. He cannot kill Quagmire and Bison. At the same time, there is not enough damage considering he cannot get any more units out. He is out of summons. How does he choose? He has to kill one or the other. This is a seven key sacrifice. Is the sacrifice too much? Well, if you've been keeping count, we are seven keys up. We are even, and the heart is dying. Actually, we're probably a lot more than seven keys up, but uh, <laughs> let's move on forward with the uh, robot and see what it's going to end up being like after the trade before we actually count it. Let's get our turn in before we go crazy like that. We move forward, and the muffin top heals the quagmire. My man is back in this game in a vicious way as we go ahead and smack the jackrabbit, and we're going to go ahead and crack the bones while we're at it. We're going to make sure Boomer comes up and body blocks the double tap that would have been lethal at a stabby. As he comes forward with the rabbit, knowing full well he can no longer kill quagmire, with the positioning out of a unit he has been letting be here by design. As he groups everybody up well you are allowed to group everybody up as we understand we have an aoe tase out of big o robot blastomatic if i do say so myself we step onto the pad and we have taken two kills for the price of one we are body blocking the robot that does have lethal my man has no way to get away with only a movement of one and the board is still completely ours easy peasy easy money don't rush the mate pieces you might run into a galaxy brain all right we're gonna hop on out of this one and we're gonna make sure we head out hey hey, hey. i appreciate the victory my g I appreciate the victory. Let's go ahead and check out one. Whoa, 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 whoa. You guys want to see my win rate? Um, it, we're, we're doing okay. You know, this is how many games I've played total, by the way. Um, we've smashed 162 hearts. Um, we are actually, like, breaking even on kills, funny enough, for my win rate. Um, and we've eliminated uh, less keys than we've lost. And I have a positive win rate. Something's wrong. Uh, let's go into the ultra rare spamming map. Wallet 181 easy peasy. Now... Never mind. This is the hardest game I've had in a while. This man is a genius. Real talk. He's a genius, but this is the story of how to handle it. When you go on against units that maybe you don't even know what they do, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Now, while it 181 did trick me at one point, pulling out a unit that I thought was a different unit, and you're going to see what I'm talking about in a second, we take the flight to the bottom and the boomer to the top lane, and he is going to shove his Fire Wolf straight into the middle. He is going to maintain pressure in the center if he can help it. With the bat play up top, he has spent six keys for the same pressure point advantage. As we have currently, he has not taken three pressure points doing so. He could have if he wanted to. That was not the play. It is okay. We're going to go ahead and put Boomer in the front, knowing full well his HP is good here. The tank is going to tank for Clobster 
and for Sir Baddington the Skull. To be or not to be, wherefore art thou, Jack Skellington? You know what I'm talking about. He could be anything you want him to be. Just, just, I, I'm not going to go any farther on that sentence. Boomer goes forward and is going to try his best to maintain map control as Mount Crushmore comes out. Is Mount Crushmore up top going to be enough walls, however, as the red corner gets out a poison dragon to answer the void unit usage we have used here? We have two void units and an undead unit. The poison dragon shows up. Up, and we are forever going to have to keep in mind we are playing his game all of a sudden. With a dragon here, we must play around it. There is no time to slack. There is no time to slow down as the Clopster moves forward in positioning, knowing full well he can eat the blast easily and double tap if it comes to it. Beautiful positioning out of the Clopster, allowing a chance for the poison cooldown to be wasted. Should sloppy play come out as Snowball comes forward and handles Boomer, as Jinston comes forward and handles Boomer, as the dragon has chosen not to take the bait, he is playing way too smart to eat that bait up. It is okay, man. We got a whole lot more worms in this can, my dog. Now we have Baba Yaga coming forward, knowing full well there's poison on top side to bait out more poison on the bottom side. We put the trap down in the middle. This is an AoE trap for 600 damage, 50% less around 300 on the AoE around the trap tile should someone pop it off. And Quagmire is here to completely stop the passage of the poisoning sheep. Lil Bo Sheep. Better go on back with that gas mask. Now, with the poison theme, you might think he just pulled out a Russell. You would be wrong. That is Edgar Allan Crow, and I believed it fully to be a, a, a Russell. And I'm glad I did, because I probably wouldn't have spawned right now who I ended up spawning. I made a mistake thinking all of a sudden I'm on a time limit. We're all poisoned. Everybody watch the hell out. It's okay. We get a robot out. We get another robot out. We come on back. Everything's good. The jar is in position all of a sudden needlessly. Unfortunately, now we both have things to play around, and we almost stalemated ourselves as a maneuver I've never even seen before, having never seen this character in my life, maybe outside of one clip where someone pulled it out and surrendered. Uh, genuinely no idea what this dude did until just then. Pulls out a stim for the whole team to boost their damage as Quagmire is destroyed by the AoE buff. Five keys down is a big deal when you are trying to hold a siege. We have lost everything not expecting the buff. The buff catches us by surprise and this is what I'm talking about. When using things that people are unfamiliar with can give you a strong advantage regardless of who it may be. As we crush more to answer the key bleed back. We crush more into the bat, into the Clopster, understanding the HP on the Clopster is good in positioning. We double tap, knowing full well the jar is safe too, with no danger in mind. We move our... What's this man's name? B B woman's name, Baba Yaga, out of the way. And Blastomatic once again comes forward for no other reason than we are seeing ultra rares fly, we better get used to it. If we're using expensive units, we got two Blastomatic matches back to back. That doesn't happen very often, man. But I love using the only real ultra rare I've got. He's the only one I've spawned, man. Give me some break. As we move forward with a destructive shot on the bat, completely ending his reign of terror. However, we have answered back, and now we are only three keys down. We have made up two keys of difference over our turn, and we have a positioning game online as Crushmore gets a shot off, places a wall down, and Blastomatic pops the wall for the AoE electricity on the robot. The damage potential is beautiful. The wall is also down. Did we lose DPS? Yes. Did we gain positioning advantage and get amazing DPS out of it? Consider it min-max. As we get a unit that you never see at all, we got a hammerhead getting ready to go ahead and push whoever wants. This man has a push on his bull nose. He shoves someone. He doesn't pull someone. Why is he here? In case aggressive positioning is acquired by the enemy you don't want him to aggress you want him to defend or push off of uh, stim pads to push into traps you are here to manipulate a defensive position with this man for the most part his assaults have been seen on this channel to also be incredible just make sure you're popping off as the body block coming out of a void unit knowing full well poison is on the map and health is precious on a void unit as we speak comes forward and knowing 
there is no wall break. There's no potential to break a wall, even on this turn, of the enemy. The dragon cannot get an AoE blast off of this turn. The position is good. The robot comes out. Nurse Joy is going to try and heal up his dragon on this next turn. He's setting himself up in position to get it off on the cooldown without having to worry about it. We wait for our cooldowns and hold position. We did not use our turn at all. What was that? The turns are going minimalistic as he tries to figure out Wallid 181 how the hell to get through three Baba Yaga traps and so much HP and so much AoE, so much positional advantage. The walls are on top and bottom with only one crush more, no other unit to place walls required. All of our keys are on the table. We have full units on the board. We have full keys used. It is up and it is stuck. There's nothing left to hide. There's no more surprise poles. He has three keys left in his pocket the dragon comes forward for the aoe and he steps on the trap knowing full well baba yaga has been here or has he forgotten baba yaga is he not respecting the choice to place a trap on the pressure point well jen sting takes 605 when we put 300 on a dragon and it is time to blast jen sing twice beautiful dps coming out of my mans as we pop the sheep one time the dragon one time acknowledging the presence of the sheep and we sacrifice a no hp left crush more to put a wall down to stop the positioning. Three walls placed by Crushmore. And bear in mind how much damage he has put out over the course of this. That is value for six keys. Now we hold position. Blastomatic is in position as we speak. He is in position as we speak. He is ready to start AoE blasting his Hevo, who is aware of it now that the shot has already been used on him, and backs up. He cannot stand next to this wall with anything that is not okay with being AoE down by a double tap. We can double tap AoE that thing. Imagine trying to stand next to that thing if Erratic was next to it. That's why he's afraid. It's the same deal minus the life steal. As Baba Yaga and Nurse Joy move around the safe path, Understanding that we need to heal Baba Yaga and get his health back up. We need to get the poison off of him. Being a void unit, he's taking more poison damage than the rest of the units will. As an ultra rare werewolf goes ahead and expands into, you already know, the full real deal. As Edgar Allan Crow, the whole team damage buffer, moves forward and begins to break the wall. Now, is it a mistake that the wall has not been broken? Absolutely, because I have nothing that can assault him if he broke it open. If I were this man, I probably would have opened it. There's nothing I would have been able to do about it. The biggest mistake he made, and possibly the only mistake he made. Now, you could call the trap positioning a mistake. How the hell else was he going to get it without stepping someone on there? Maybe he could have spawned on one key, and to be honest, that's exactly what he should have done. He should have got a sniffles. He should have got any one key at all, a bone, anything. He did not. And now what are we doing? We are moving Blastomatic in position. We are moving the Hammerhead into position. Nurse Joy comes forward, and we wait. We wait, and we observe as Hammerhead defends Baba Yaga. As Blastomatic defends mid and bottom single-handedly as the jar stands and the jar falls. We have lost our jar. However, now that this man has finally answered our defense, is it too little too late? Did we hold out long enough as we hammer head down into bottom and reclaim what is ours? As we step forward an AOE shot straight through as my man uh, is apparent. What is happening? Can someone explain to me what the heck is happening? I, I, look, look, no, 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 no. That's not how that's happening. That is not how that's happening, Phobies. I apologize for trying to watch my own footage back. I guess I was idle too long, Phobies. We AoE blast straight through and hit the heart for 612. After reclaiming the entire territory, re-trapping with Baba Yaga, coming back for with, you already know, and Clobster comes back for the backswing, and that is the end of his heart on the turn. Walid... I hardly knew you, dog. Is that a defense or is that a defense? Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. Peace. Hold on. Let's see these stats. What do you think this dude's got going on? We're not going to stock. Peace.